Yo dog, KDB Shea here, next level painting. Hitting you with part two of how to paint weathering effects and cool heating effects on big old tanks. Uh, I wanna thank everyone right now who subscribed to the channel and if you haven't subscribed, please do. First step, as usual, let's do some base coats. Laying down a really healthy uh, layer of black. Uh, black is one of those colors, man, you know, uh, black can go either way on you. My favorite right now is Vallejo Air Black. Yeah, I just think it's got the most silky, uh, just most satin uh, black look to it. Like sometimes you paint a black and it has that chalky look. Sometimes it has that glossy look. This is kind of just perfect right in between. It um, it must have a little blue in it or something. I'm not sure. But, you know, blues that, blues that get into black tend to help that black have a little bit more depth. And I just feel really good about this black. Um, and as you can see, we're just laying it on. It's just like the, just like a primer, you know. But you know, building it up with the airbrush at exactly uh, the the thickness that I want, so that way it's not going everywhere. You know, if I get any pooling, I can just kind of blow it out with that with the air, kind of solve that problem right there. I also primed it kind of metal at first. Then I came back and just spot graded on because I knew I would want some metal to peek through in some of the parts. Next, let's uh, hit some of these transitions. I'm going to highlight it with some gray. Uh, the you know I'm looking for a nice subtle German gray. I got a couple of my back my back pocket that I use, uh, but I'm doing something a little bit different here. I'm going from the bottom up with my transition. A lot of times I just go light on top, dark on the bottom. That's very traditional for me. I've seen a couple of people online doing it this way, and I'm just kind of trying it out. It's kind of one of my first times doing it, so you know I I don't have any problems with it. I don't know exactly if the lighting would do this, but I think it looks pretty sweet. And I'm, I'm liking how it's nurturing a nice new transition effect. Coming back to one of my favorite techniques, the typhus corrosion. I mean, I just like I just can't say no good things about this. This is the linchpin of this uh, kind of weathering and, uh, you know, uh, scorching tutorial. Obviously, I'm painting a, a, a tank. I'm showing you all those techniques. But also, I'm showing you how to, like, oh, go overkill with an effect. Typhus corrosion, as I've said it before, is a GW uh, technical color. It um, has a bunch of grit in it. It kind of goes on real thick. It'll ruin your paintbrush, but it's, I mean, I, I feel like the way it was manufactured was that you, you, you paint something metal first and then spot it on. But I've kind of come up with this overboard technique where I just lay it on thick and then do the metal afterwards. Um, I also use a sponge, which is just pluck and pull foam. I keep a drawer of them and I just, you know, just feather it out, like dapple it out into all the directions it hits the edges. Kind of gives you that splatter transition, kind of like, and you're not sure if it's dirt, you're not sure if it's corrosion, kind of look to it. Uh, I, I, I do love it, you know, it's, it's, it's a dope effect and I strongly recommend getting a pot. Real quick, I'm just gonna blast through the second tank real quick. Everything I just did, I showed you kind of more extended. We're going real quick on this one, just each section. Same kind of deal, just lay it on, you know. <laughs> just drop that type of corrosion off, just thick, get in the cut, get in those little angles. And you'll see, this is where I primed it silver, then gray, but I try to get the silver to stay in all the little transition spots. I'm coming on with the metals, just laying them on thick, real smooth. I'm using some Vallejo Air. I can't say enough good things about the Vallejo Air line. I use it, it's half of all the color I use, and I use a lot of different paints. So you can just see, get your paintbrush out, paint these really smooth transitions on. I'll take this moment to say something kind of interesting. You know, when I first was learning how to paint, I didn't know how to, I didn't know what I was doing. And someone had taught me that you paint everything black and then you can dry brush metal over it. For years, I can't even tell you, like a decade, I thought that was the only way you could paint metal. Paint it black, then you can paint it metal. Like seriously, I'll go out of my way to paint all the things I was gonna paint metal black first. Then I'll paint the metal with the dry brush technique. Well, now that I'm more advanced, I mean, there's washes and there's inks and et cetera. So now I just typically just find a good metal paint it very smooth, transition-y, uh, paint by numbers, and then I just put a wash on it later. And that gives me a lot more control, I find. So, you know, always look for something new. You've been doing, you've been doing something your own way for years. Uh, I'm telling you, man, there's a million ways to do something, and, and I don't always have the answer, but these are the ways I do things. We're coming back with the dry brush technique. All the little typhus corrosions and all the little nooks and crannies, like I said, I think they wanted us to paint it metal, then spot corrosion on, but I'm, flip, I'm flipping the roll here. So now I'm, I'm adding the metal to the typhus corrosion and all the places it needs to go. This might look a little weird here in a minute, like I'm using a, like a paper towel just to kind of segregate some of the areas. That's because when you start going berserk mode with a, with a dry brush technique, it will like sometimes just eject 
little metal flecks all over the place and you'll find them on your model label like glitter. It's uh, super annoying and you just want to protect your really clean transitions. So I'm just really quickly just shielding areas of the model as I go. It's not, I mean, it's not especially inge ingenious tactic, but it, it gets the job done, man. I pulled the sponge out here, kind of just to get really aggressive with the metal transitions. I uh, dry brushed it on real subtle just to give that whole one, like that whole once over. The sponge lets me get real aggro in some of the areas I want, really want it to look like this is where the contact is. This is where it's dragging those, you know, those those moving parts all over the all over the ground and the metal hitting the metal, you know. Just, so this is this is the aggro part. Like I said, I love that sponge. I just keep on my plug and pull foam so I can pull it out, maybe manipulate it with an X-Acto knife, and get the the shape I want. Now I'm taking that Rizza Rust, one of my favorite GW uh, technicals or try. You buy it with the technical paints. Um, and I'm really just kind of spotting it on and getting that dappled effect because it just looks cool to get it to to be concentrated in one area and then speckle it out. It gives it just a really cool look. So I, I really try to nurture that with this with the combination of using a sponge, but I also I'll pull a paintbrush out and I'll find that one little spot and you know where I want to really pull it down instead of have it bur burst out. So I kind of just kind of go with my heart on it. Like I don't really put too much thought into how rust develops. I, but I do know what looks cool. So I'm just trying to get some cool colors to pop off. And like I see the pattern that looks cool to me. Not necessarily what's the most accurate. But I mean, ultimately, I only paint things that I like. So I'm going to spend a lot more time showing you this technique, the oxide technique. It's another color from the GW Technical line. Gives you that like total oxidization corrosion effect. And it just, it, it's really bright. It might not it might not belong here but i love the way it looks and like when you see it you know what it is so it does have that like third layer of, of you know weathering it, it, it's a cool effect but it does take some nurturing so you got to water it down sometimes sometimes you got to put it on thick i use a paintbrush and i very control i use a very controlled application you can't just go beast mode with it like with the sponge technique it will get literally everywhere and it will look like crap don't do it uh take your time with it what i'm trying to do here is i'm trying to get that like that drainage look like where maybe some water pulled around a couple of joints and then drained out and stained it with this oxidization a corrosive you know liquid maybe so just just remember take your time with it. here's a good look at what we've done so far and as you can see coming out pretty good you can see what i'm talking about with that drainage effect how i'm, I'm pulling it down by hand now let's add some more of this oxide effect. We gotta get into the vents. This is where it looks real good. Get inside of those smokestacks and those vents. You know, just find all the spots. Like really, this effect is not to be uh, rushed. Like find the spots, go with it. Don't just put it in one little spot and think that's gonna look cool. Um, if, it's, if it's on one part of the model, it's probably supposed to be on more than one part of the model. Of course, this is a very extreme strategy we're using here. This is not the best example of that, but just remember that. Like you should have it in more than one element. Let me hit you with the second tank real quick. Just like I said, you know, I'm, I'm doing both two tanks at once here. I try not to hold back on my tutorials. So here we go, the same same technique. Uh, just just coming in hot in the same way. Just like I said, nurture it, man. Like, like I said, when, when you airbrush something, you save a lot of time. What you do with that time is what is going to define your paint job. If you save three hours and you don't do anything with three hours, you will look like you just airbrushed something and slacked. You have to do something with those three hours. It's not about, it's, it's about being more, more practical with your time and your approach, time management. It's not about cutting corners. It's about sicker transitions and more details on the back end. Just having a much better product. So I got all these green stuff stamps that my brother made from No Turtles Allowed. Of course, he's the one who assembles on my models. Um, we were trying to do this Dark Angel theme and I was like, hey man, what can you do? He's like, I got your back, you know? So he hooked me up. Uh, slapped on some stamps uh, and now I'm just painting them all gold you know I'll throw a wash over them at some point but I'm just using the Vallejo air gold it's, it's a good color for now uh, I'll do a little transitioning you know blends later uh, but you know just solid slather that gold on get it on there nice real thick let it dry now with all these metals we've applied I'm coming back and doing that thing I talked about I've got just a black wash from GW and I'm just washing these things. I, I, and I wash it thick, man. I don't, I don't cut the wash, nothing. I just come in, slather it on, guide it into all the crevices, you know, 
navigate out of flat areas, you know, just manipulate it with your brush, get a good brush that you like to use, no slacking, uh, you just, just got, you gotta pay attention to this process. This is another definer next level painting technique, washes. Uh, like you, you hear me talk about edge highlighting a lot, um, I hate it. But I do like to subtly highlight the edges of certain areas I wanna pull attention to. Like I said, I will literally never sit there and trace every line on the model. That is completely dead to me. But what I will do is I will find angles that are like in the front or on the side, wherever I pick, just the 90 degree, just like this 90 degree cut, I will, I will trace that little region and I'll start with a very subtle highlight that's very close to the base color and then closer to the actual point, I will bring it out, bring it out brighter. I'm using a really dark gray here, just finding all those little spots. Uh, you know, real, real subtle, getting the right transition, you gotta use the right brush, you gotta get a good liner brush, super good detail brush for this. Like no, no slacking on your brush. You gotta spend some money on a couple of good brushes that you only use for these types of things and you gotta keep them in good shape. And then once I find all those little spots and I draw the lines where I want, I go back in, maybe mix a little bit of white in with that gray that I had mixed and find those little points. And if I wanna get even more detail, I'll go even pure white in some of the points. That's not the case on this model. I'm trying to do more of an understated highlight on the black because we're really leaning on the technical effects here, the really, the really weathering techniques. And also there's a lot going on with the turrets. The turrets are the focal point of this model, but that doesn't let you slack on this. But be clean, be chill, be understated, and subtle. That is gonna just help draw the eye to the thing that we spent the most time on. Yo, now I'm just finding the tracks, flipping it up, and I'm spraying some brown ons. I use a, a bunch of browns. I'll use some Reaper browns, I'll use some Vallejo browns. I don't use a lot of GW browns, but I do use a lot of GW paint. I think this might just simply be like Graveyard Earth from Vallejo. Uh, and I just find like where the dirt would kick up, it's really good to combine the two. You know, I'll speckle that corrosion in there, get some of that texture, and I'll use this at the same time. And then maybe I'll chip some metal in there later. I'm not gonna go too in depth in that. That's all really basic stuff. I mean, you've seen how we use the sponge. Go go crazy with it. You'll find a bunch of cool things to do. Hey, um, so, you know, you can see how it's coming along here. Uh, we don't have a lot more to do left on these tanks. I still have to do the weapons, though, the sponsons and the glow effects and the last cannon weapons. So there are a couple more things to do. I just don't know how much time I want to spend on this tank on our Wednesday spot. So hit me up in the comments. Let me know. If you want another full-length tutorial on this tank, Maybe I'll do that. If, if enough of you say, let's do that, I'll do it. If a bunch of you don't care and you want to see, want me to move on to the next thing, I'll just maybe design a little featurette of finishing this tank off and I'll move on to the next thing. Um, and as usual, check out all the links in my description box below. Please check me out on my other mediums and please subscribe. I'm fueled by subscriptions, of course. Um, and as, as usual, thanks for watching, players.